Hello, this is Amjad al Mindilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting the third case of a series of PCI on calcified vessels. The case is about balloon non dilatable lesion. The case is a 68 year old man referred to us after failure to dilate middle ID. He is diabetic, not hypertensive, not a smoker, had a DDD pacemaker implanted for complete heart to block a year ago, and he has dyspnea on minimal exertion. ECG pacing rhythm, he has a normal eject echo with an ejection fraction of 63. This is the angiogram in the AP caudal view shows a calcified mid-LID lesion. The AP cranial view shows a calcified intermediate lesion at the proximal part, followed by a very tight lesion, then a bend in the LID, then what appears to be a calcified nodule. Then the LED becomes a small caliber vessel. The large branch is either, this large branch, is either a split LED or a large septal branch. The lesion was crossable by ordinary balloon and NC balloons, but as you can see, they couldn't dilate it even with very high pressure. Here we can see the 3O and C balloon almost split into two parts with failure to dilate the lesion. So what to do when you face a lesion that would not dilate? First of all, avoid stenting such lesions because dealing with a non-dilatable stent is much more difficult than dealing with a non-dilatable native coronary. We need to take a large guiding cath with good support to facilitate equipment delivery and if possible, intravascular imaging is important to understand the lesion further. And then use balloons. First try with NC balloon and go up to, high, to burst pressure and even more. Try to use the smaller balloons, which when inflated to the burst pressure, its diameter will not exceed the vessel diameter. And in this way, you avoid the risk of injury. The other thing is to use special balloons, like the cutting balloon, or the angioscalp, or the scoroflex. In this case, the LED was not dilatable, and a scoroflex balloon was effective in dilating this lesion. If these are not available, to try to pass a wire or two beside the balloon to make it effective as cutting balloon. In this case, LID didn't dilate with long NC balloon and not with a smaller balloon with high pressure. So what we did, we passed a wire besides the same NC balloon with the same pressure and this was effective in dilating the lesion. Other special balloons are the very high pressure balloon like the OPM balloon which reached a pressure up to 30 and even 50 atmosphere. Shockwave IVL is an important development in treatment of heavily calcified vessels, especially if non-dilatable. However, the balloon has a low profile and you need some space to cross with it, and is difficult to pass in subtotal occlusions. Then comes the role of debulking with atherectomy, especially when the previously mentioned equipment wouldn't pass the tight lesion. We go back to our case. After trying with NC balloon, the previous operator used the OPM balloon, but this was not possible to cross the lesion even after anchoring to the septal branch. We tried to pass an IVL balloon, and although the NC balloon crossed the lesion, but the IVL balloon did not cross. So we thought that some debulking is necessary, and in this case, we used rotational atherectomy. We used a 1.5 millimeter burr and needed around seven runs to cross the lesion. And use the same bar to shave the distal calcified nodule, which we didn't intend to stent. And this is the result after rotational atherectomy. We dilated further with NC balloon 
2.5 by 20 and did IBIS. This is the distal LED, which is rather small. And then comes the calcified nodule. And then an area of normal LED. Then comes the bifurcation. And just before the bifurcation is the tightest part of the LED with a ring of calcification. And then proximal to that, there is around 270 or 180 degree arc of calcium. And as we go proximal to LED, this is the proximal part, which is fairly normal. So we thought that further action needed because of this ring of calcification. And that's why we used the IBL balloon 3.5 by 12, several cycles needed across the whole length of the lesion. And this is the IVAS post the IBL. Here comes the bifurcation. And then we can see how the ring was fractured. This is the 80 degree of calcium, but the ring fractured here. And this is the calcified part, which is around 180 degree. And then comes the proximal part. There was some hematoma there. And this is the proximal part. Here is a comparison between the LED before and after IVL balloon. S10 3.5 by 38 was deployed with complete expansion. It was post dilated by NC ballon. And the IVAS shows a good opposition and expansion of the struts of the stents with a large MSA, although in the very tight part or in the ring of or the when or the in the at the part that is calcified. It does not appear to be very rounded, but this is what can be achieved in very high calcified, highly calcified vessels. This is the proximal part of this, and this is the final result. So the messages from this case are that coronary calcification imposes a great burden in the field of intervention. Adequate technical supplies and expertise are required to face such conditions, and operators should have knowledge to deal with balloon and dilatable lesions. Atherectomy and lithotripsy are important tools to deal with coronary calcification. And thank you.